Cuts in government funding hurt Aetna's private Medicare business, and that sent shares lower. The health insurance company's profits missed estimates, and Aetna kept its cautious outlook. On the bright side, revenue did come in above estimates, boosted by its recent acquisition of Coventry Healthcare. The stock still dropped more than 1.5%. It finished at $60.75. Well, Edna CEO Mark Bertolini was also asked about the new health law and a report today that says the Obama administration knew millions of Americans would not be able to keep their insurance plans. The only people who can keep their plan indefinitely are people who in the individual and small group market were in that market before March 23, 2010, and over that period, from 2000, March 2010 till now, did not change their plans. Accusations that the White House misled people to believe they could keep their insurance plans, combined with troubles on the government's health care website, resulted in some heated questions at hearings on Capitol Hill today about what went wrong and who's to blame. Bertha Coombs has more. Mike Salamone was surprised when Anthem Blue Cross notified him this month his family health plan would no longer be offered. The primary reason, uh, they said, is that there's about 10 or 11 components that every plan has to carry. The retired St. Louis executive says a comparable plan on healthcare.gov will cost him twice as much, $1,400 a month, because he doesn't qualify for subsidies. I was very shocked to find out that my plan was uh, being canceled and it was not compliant. And uh, my shock, uh, I guess, kind of turned maybe to anger. There was plenty of that anger at today's Ways and Means hearing directed at Marilyn Tavener, the chief of CMS, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid. This man wrote me and said, my wife has been recently informed by her insurance carrier that her health care policy does not comply with the Affordable Care Act. Tavener's defense? Insurers had the option to update under the Affordable Care Act and were known to cancel plans before the law. Half the people in the individual market prior to 2010 didn't stay on their policies. They were either kicked off for pre-existing condition. They saw their premiums go up at least 20 percent a year. An NBC investigation found the White House knew between 45 to 75 percent of plans in the individual market did not comply with ACA benefit requirements and would have to change, countering unqualified assurances from President Obama. If you're one of the more than 250 million Americans who already have health insurance, you will keep your health insurance. This law will only make it more secure and more affordable. But change was to be expected, says Georgetown's Sabrina Corlett, with the individual market effectively now one large pool. If you're an employer-based coverage, if you're a healthy person, you are subsidizing your fellow employees who might have more health care needs. It's the same idea. For Republicans, it's another Obama health care promise not delivered, like the healthcare.gov website. The WhiteHouse.gov website today says if you have health insurance that you like, you will be able to keep it. She has health insurance that she likes. She's been paying her premium. She wants to keep it, but she can't. Isn't that a lie? Mike Salamone would like to see less partisan fighting and more flexibility for millions like him. Allow choice um, and uh, allow us to be better shoppers and get something that meets our requirements. It's Health and Human Services Secretary Kathleen Sebelius' turn in the hot seat tomorrow. In her prepared remarks for the House Energy and Commerce Committee, she touts how, for most Americans, premiums will be lower under the Affordable Care Act. She will no doubt be grilled about that. Bertha Coombs for Nightly Business Report.